Off-camera flash is already intimidating, especially when we're talking about using more than one flash. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step process for creative studio portraits. Let's get into it. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? Welcome to Adorama TV. You know how I like to do. I wanna get straight into this. So we're in the studio. We're gonna do a two light setup and I'm gonna give you a process that you can apply to make studio lighting simple, especially when we're talking two lights, three lights, four lights, whatever. Let's talk first about what you need. Camera and lens of your choice really doesn't matter so long as you can you know, you have a hot shoe for a remote and off-camera flash setup. I'm gonna be using the Canon R5 with the 28 to 70. This is my standard kind of workhorse combination. For your off-camera flashes, just two off-camera lights is going to work. You're gonna be able to understand the principles of this. I'm gonna be using two studio lights by Westcott. This is the Westcott FJ400. I have two of these. They're fantastic lights. They come at a good price point. And on this one, because we're gonna do a bit of creative lighting, I have the Lindsay Adler Optical Spot. Lindsay's not only one of my friends, she's an incredible photographer, and this is an awesome accessory for creative lighting. It's actually quite affordable too. So we have that so we can control the shape of the light, and I'll walk through all that in a second. I just wanna go through the gear. I have a second flash set up here. This is another FJ400, and it actually has a, uh, well, an octabox kind of going up into the ceiling, right? The softbox. Do we really need the softbox? Not really. You're gonna find out that we're using that just for fill. So just a bare flash kind of bouncing off something is gonna be totally fine. And I'm gonna get into all the setup right now. Okay, so we have that camera, lens, remote, two off-camera flashes. Now you need someone to photograph. So, Jesus, call my name, my friend. This is Jesus. I actually met you through Kiara, which you guys know as well because she often models for us too. So Jesus is a dancer. We're gonna link him up so you guys can give him a follow if you'd like. And uh, yeah, what I wanna do here is we have this spot. In fact, if you actually step back a little bit, you can see, you guys can probably barely see that the modern light is coming through this little optical lens and it's creating a spotlight right on the wall. I wanna start this video with what not to do, okay? In this process, what I most commonly see is that photographers will set up one light and kind of just begin shooting. And here's what happens. Well, I'm gonna start with just a baseline setting. Does it really matter? Not really. I'm just gonna go to like 1 200 of a setting, uh, 1 200 of a shutter, F4, ISO 400. And we'll put this maybe around six power, five power, somewhere around there, just so we have a baseline, okay? I'm gonna take a shot. Okay. What we immediately notice is that, well, we have all of this overhead lighting going on. We do have a cool light pattern on the wall, but yeah, we got these fluorescent lights that are adding tons of green. I do need to adjust my exposure. And what we often would do is say, well, okay, my first step is obviously to turn off the lights, right? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna turn off the lights. And then from here, since those lights are out, I'm just gonna keep shooting now, right? I've taken care of my light setup. I've got my one light, I'm good to go. I'm just gonna go right here and start taking a couple more shots. And don't worry, I am gonna walk through the whole setup of this in just a second. But this is the issue, is that from here, if I'm adjusting and I go, you know what, the flash power is a bit um, too much, I'm just gonna bring my ISO down to 200 ISO, and now I'm gonna shoot again, okay? What ends up happening, and this is oftentimes what I see, is that you're losing all the detail outside of the light. See, when you only set up a single light source in the studio, we really don't have any fill in the shadows. So the shadows go completely black like what you're seeing here. And granted, you can make that a style in and of itself. That's totally fine. But what I like to do is actually have control of the shadows. In fact, the process that I'm gonna give you right now is to start from that place. So what we're gonna do is actually break this down and I'm gonna take this light completely out, okay? Let's go ahead and remove this light source because the first step that I'm gonna give you is to actually set up the scene fill. See, what we're doing by this is we're actually mirroring kind of natural light circumstances. When we step out and we shoot outdoors, right, you already have a fill. It's the sun. So you already have that basic light in the scene and you're working off that. But in the studio, we don't have that. So I wanna set up kind of what I want my shadows, what I want my environment to look like from that first 
light source. Does it matter, by the way, if you want to put this on, you know, some people like their main light for their subject to be group A, right? It doesn't matter. You set up that process. But what I have here is just a light. This is an FJ400. I'm going to turn this guy on. Do I need the softbox? No, because I'm just bouncing it off the ceiling and it just has it on there. I don't want to take it off. So I'm just going to make it simple. It's set to currently eight power. So if we think about that, that's, I believe, highest power on these guys is nine. So that's 200 watts. Okay, so we went down one stop in power. Okay, so I'm going to put that at eight power. I'm going to go ahead and power up my remote. We're good. We do a little test shot. And now I'm going to go to one two hundred of a second, F4, ISO 200, and just start from there. And you're going to go, well, that doesn't look great. Well, we're not trying to make that look great, right? Remember, what we're trying to do here is decide how bright we want our shadows to be. There's two things that I want to do. Notice that by doing this, by the way, we've killed all the ambient light. See, if you were to say, well, what if I just, you know, turn out the lights and I wanted to do this without this secondary light? Well, I'm going to take the remote off and I'm going to adjust so that we're using the natural light in the studio as our fill light, right? The problem with that is with the natural light in the studio as the fill, not only do I have to shoot like F2, ISO 3200, one one hundredth of a second, but you'll notice that I can do that, but then I get all the shadows from those different light sources, and I don't want those shadows. So again, I don't want to use that natural light because it might be coming from places that I don't want. So what I'm going to do, go back to ISO 400. I'm going to go to F4, one two hundred of a second. If I take a shot with no light, then you'll notice that it's basically a black frame. I'm cutting out all the studio light, the ambient light, and I'm going to add my own basic fill. So I'm going to put this back on. And here's the thing. I don't necessarily like running my flashes at a super high power setting. This is 200 watts, so that's half power, right? If you want, you could bring it down to, let's say, seven, right? So we're running it at one quarter power. And you'd compensate for that just by bringing your ISO up, so long as we don't start seeing too much of the ambient light. Let's go ahead and test this at ISO 400, F4. And that looks pretty nice. I like my shadows kind of deep and dark right there. I might leave this back at eight, okay? And I could adjust this. My, uh, my Westcott peeps are gonna be like, why isn't he using the remote? You're right, you're right, I should be. Just when it's right there, you know, it's right there. Perfect. Looking at the histogram, I have these nice deep shadows. I'm not clipping the blacks. This is my starting point, okay? This part's hugely important because this is the shadow detail in the frame. And notice that if you compare this to the natural light image, we don't have those crazy shadows coming off these, uh, you know, weird directions. It's just this nice fill. From here, this is where I like to build to my next light. So the next step in this process, step one was your scene fill. Step two is going to be your main light, okay? I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy in. We have a second FJ 400 set up on a stand. And yes, I set them up on stands so you guys don't have to watch me doing boring stuff, you know? It's not too fun. Okay. And this is what has the optical snoot on this guy. Whenever I'm using snoots and, and gobos, gobos are go-between objects and different kind of patterns, I'm going to turn the modding light on because it enables me to actually see what I'm working with, right? This is hugely important for stuff like this. And I'm going to adjust this. Uh, so this is the standard pattern that comes with the optical snoot. It's just the circular pattern. So I'm going to keep these barn doors open, and I'm just going to adjust the uh, sharpness of this to get it to something that I like. Right about there. Okay, I can gauge the distance. I can say if I want it to be smaller, I'm going to bring it forward. If I want it to be larger, I'm going to pull it back. I want it to be a little bit larger. So my thought here with this is that I want to capture this motion. So as Jesus dances, I want to see the legs, but I'm going to crop the feet out and I want to see the hands and I want to have the face and kind of torso lit, everything else kind of being in shadow around him. I think that would look really cool. My next step is to make sure that this light is at the right power. Okay, notice that I'm going step by step, right? First step was make sure our fill was good because I don't want to adjust. This is another big mistake that we often make. We start adjusting power settings on two or three different lights at a time. I'm just going one at a time. And if I wanted to add a third or fourth light, I would do it after this is set up. 
So right now it's set to seven, which is one quarter power, right? Full power on this is, is uh, nine. So let's just test it on seven. And I noticed that if I have my highlight alert turned on, it is a bit bright. So I'm gonna take this guy down to six. So it's gonna go one stop lower. So this is one eighth power basically. It's nice having light sources like the FJ400 that have more power because, well, I'm not running those smaller flashes at like full power and the recycle times you know, are gonna be really slow. So this looks about right. Let's get a little test shot. Dope. That already looks cool. That looks really cool. Okay. This is where you can make any other adjustments. If I want to test, if I want my shadows to be darker now, what I'm gonna do is just adjust my ISO down. I'm gonna take a shot again. And I go, yeah, you know what? I actually kind of like the shadows a bit darker. So I'm gonna leave the shadows right there and I'm just gonna dial up my main light a little. Let's bring it up to like 6.5. Oh, I love that balance. I'm just looking at the back of the camera for this, but I love it. So this is how we get really refined control over those shadows versus the main light. Now this is the place where your step three would be your third light source. If you were to look at this and say, hey, I want something else, now you add another one. If you wanted to step forward, that would be your fourth light source, but only after you've set up step three. But guess what, we're good. I like this setup. I dig this. This is kind of like, for me, what we're aiming for here is Jesus being a dancer. We're kind of aiming to create this spotlight that sort of highlights him as if we're like kind of in a Hollywood show or in a Hollywood studio. So now with everything dialed in, you get to, well, have fun and shoot. bonus tips because you know I like bonus tips the invention of being able to shoot off a viewfinder oh, I freaking love it for situations like this where I want to be right in front of that light oh, that's dope okay I'm gonna shoot some more but you guys are done that's it for my basic kind of multi-light setup in the studio I'm gonna get more advanced with this stuff so if you guys enjoyed this tutorial comment below because I want to get into starting to use gels and gobos and different in-between effects but this is our baseline video so I hope you guys enjoyed once again thank you to Jesus our model he did fantastic I can't wait to keep shooting actually and uh, we want you guys to stick around so if you guys dig content here you know what to do subscribe like the video that helps out a ton helps Adorama know too that I'm doing my job I'm doing it well if you guys want to see me back here. And comment below because I get a lot of ideas from your guys' questions, your guys' comments. So let me know what you think and what you'd like to learn next. If you want to follow me, you can find me at PyGersa. I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>